Hi and welcome to another Endgame video. In this video I'm gonna show you two very important converting techniques in rook endings so that you can really convert your material advantage and win games. So the first position we start with is the so-called Lucena position which was discover, discovered already a long time ago but it's very important till today and I will show you how to win this. So what uh, have we reached in this position? So white is having one extra pawn and this pawn has already made it till the seventh rank. So this is very good. So we are very close to queening it. The only problem is that the king is kind of uh, caught in uh, front of the pawn and there is no way for the white king out at the moment because the king is guarding those squares and the rook is guarding the h file. So um, we need to be either very creative or we need to know the mechanism how to win the Lucena position. And yeah, you can also, um, as usual, try to think about the position on your own and come up with ideas, but we will just um, continue with the solution. So the first thing what it needs to do is to throw the black king away from the e-file. And this is very easy. We just give one check and soon there will be space for our king. So black basically has no choice. He should go to the d-file. Why not to the f-file? You can think about it also. If the king is on the f-file, it's basically blocking the checks which the black rook would like to give. So after king f8, black is having no checks and it's very obvious that the pawn will just be queening in one moment. There is no way to stop it. Rook h8 impossible. And also rook a1 is impossible because this is just some uh, fake threat because we just can queen and it's not checkmate because we have rook, a, rook to e8 in the end. So this would be very easy for white. So that's why black should choose one of those squares, either d7 or d6. And we will have a look at d7 because I think it's the toughest and we will see. And what many people would try if they are unfamiliar with this position and uh, winning method is to let the pawn forward right away. But this would be a mistake because the king again has n nowhere to hide and after all those checks uh, it also needs to stay close to the pawn so that the pawn is not lost and finally the king would need to hide again and we have made no progress and black can just wait. So let's go back and see how could we prepare that the king can come out safely. So let's try different things to understand this. So the first try would be to guard it in advance so that we can come here next move and then queen. But maybe you already spotted the problem with this one, which is that king e7 can also return and then we need to fight for the space again, which would mean that we need to move the rook again and we are just repeating moves, making no progress. So that's not working. And um, the method which is working is rook to e4. And the idea is that we can use the rook as a guard or as a bridge, um, as it is also called later. So let's see, black is waiting because he still thinks once the king comes up, he can check him. So let's say rook h2. White is running with the king and again black is thinking no trouble I will just check him and he needs to hide. But now the difference is that the white king is planning to go to g5 and then this rook in, comes in very very helpfully and will guard the king and there will be no way for the black rook to return and also the black king is too far away from the situation and he cannot stop the pawn. So that's the idea. You need to make the rook ready to go to g4 and then help the king run out of the, uh, run away from the checks and 
this will be a win then. So, okay, let's say black is anticipating this and he thinks, okay, if I check the king go, going forward to g5, so why am I not just waiting? Because then the king cannot come closer because the pawn would drop. So let's say we play something like king d6. And now it's a tricky situation again, and you can think about it on your own. Um, try to find the best move for white and uh, how he wins the game here. So we continue with uh, possible suggestions. One of them is definitely rook e5, but this would be a big blunder. So white is having an interesting plan to block the white black rook again, but unfortunately there is rook g7 tactics and white has just blundered the pawn because this check doesn't help. And also here, if the black rook is taken, also the white rook will fall and it's a draw. So be aware of this trick and um, make sure that this doesn't happen. So another way uh, which could be tried is to go rook to e8, trying to help the pawn. But uh, now I think it's also getting critical because the king no longer has this help of this rook. And I think it's very hard for white to make direct progress here. So we need to come up with something uh, else. And I think there are many uh, ways still. For example, you could play the first idea, but with some more accuracy. For example, you could, you could give a check here and only after the king retreats, you could come here because now this tactic doesn't work and you're ready to go rook g5 next, for example. Or if the king goes here, you also are just in time to bring the rook there with check and there are no ta tactics in between. So this is one technique or another technique is just to cut the king off by one more file, which is in general always useful to cut the king off as far as possible, which we, we will see in so many more situations. So if we give this check, the black king needs to go away. And now we have more flexibility because we have more time because the king needs more time to return to here. So I think we could basically just do it with the king check and we could hide and the rook is not able to guard both the f and the h file. And if he is waiting, we just go to the h file and drop the king uh, away and then the pawn is running. But I think the easiest is again put the rook here, threaten it, rook g5 and white wins because black needs to give up the rook for the pawn. So that's it for the Lucena position. Um, the most important things you need to remember is, first, it's a winning position. That's very important to accurately assess, is this a draw or is this a win? Because uh, this makes a lot of difference if you're thinking about this position in advance. So. This is a win. That's the first important thing. The second most important thing is we need to remember the motive that the rook will finally block the black rook. And then you will be able to figure it out over the board uh, that you give a check, put the rook here and only then run with the king. So it's important to keep in mind the motives, how black could defend and to come up with this counter idea and then to execute it accurately. So that's it for position number one. And we will continue with another example, which should be very instructive. So let's see. In this position, it's white to move and white is winning in two different ways. And yeah, you can think about it, uh, how white is winning this one. So we will continue with the solution and the keyword for the solution is cutting off the king. And we see the black king, it's very far away. If the king would be here or anywhere close, then it would be an easy draw for black, applying, for example, the Philidor defense or um, yeah, something else. But um, the Philidor defense we already saw in one of the previous videos. So 
that's not too difficult. But in the current situation, the main problem with the black position is that his king is really far away. And that's the key for white. We should keep the black king as far away as possible. And that's why the move rook e1 is the winning move. We cut him off and now we can make progress with the pawn very easily because the black rook is not strong enough to prohibit the white king and the pawn from advancing. So in this position, black, however, he has one good try. Otherwise, it's really simple. If he's waiting, then we just go further and we go further. And now the distance between king and rook is already so small that he won't be able to kick us back. And the pawn will go further down the board and the black king cannot join. But at the start of this, black can try rook c8. And now it's not so easy to move the pawn immediately because if we go here, he checks us. But we should try it anyway, run as far as possible with the king. And in this situation, he attacks our pawn. And if king b5, he checks us again. But now we use the fact that the black king is cut by two files and so we have a lot of time so our next move is rook c1 now we threaten to move the pawn and black should hurry to bring his king closer but in exactly this situation we threaten the black rook he's not able to keep it there because king d7 would drop the rook after rook d1 so he should go somewhere if c5 we just attack it once more and if c8 then we push the pawn and very important the black king cannot really come closer because here it would be cut again and the white pawn has already crossed the middle of the board and then it's a winning position and um, let me show you the link between this and uh, the previous position um, once we reach something like this we will slowly but surely enter something like the Philidor position. So black can try to prevent our king from getting out, but this we should know by now. And the winning me mechanism is to check, bring the rook to the fourth rank and then run out with the king, which is very similar to the position before. It's basically the same technique. It's the same um, winning position just on another file and you can try to find it um, or figure it out how it's working on your own. So that's method number one. And there is also another way which is um, quite instructive, but I won't go into details there. So the other winning move here is rook a6. So it's also sometimes an idea to cut the king this way, but I would prefer the other way um, in this situation. But this is also winning. The king can just not come closer and it won't be able to defend against the c pawn because he cannot come across those squares and so there is no way through. But uh, no more details on this. So summing up, um, cutting the king is a very important technique in rook, rook endings because the king is yeah just one of two pieces and um, the defensive side needs to use both of them to defend successfully. So I hope um, you found this one instructive too. And if so, um, please like the content and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot and see you next time. Goodbye.